That issue is who designates how the money should be spent. To me, it's a constitutional issue. If you vote against like an earmark when there's a single vote to cut $50 million out of some project, if you vote to do that, you just give it to the administration, uh, the executive branch to spend, and that's wrong. It should always be the Congress that designates how this money should be spent. And besides, some return of highway funds is considered evil and an earmark, but if you designate a billion dollars to build an embassy overseas, that's never an earmark. Mm -hmm. So I, I just don't like the process. But the most important thing is if you're a fiscal conservative, you will always vote against the appropriation because it's too much. Right. So I'm on record of never voting for an earmark. At the same time, I work very hard to, to protect the prerogatives of the Congress, the responsibilities of the Congress, and never delivering more power to the executive branch. Let's talk a little bit about your thoughts about Goldman Sachs. You've made some statements recently where you said all that uh, public anger at Goldman Sachs should really be directed at the Federal Reserve. A absolutely. The Federal Reserve, and if you want to go one step b further back, you have to go back to the people who allow the Congress to create the Federal Reserve System, thinking that it will be forever able to take care of uh, all the people from c cradle to grave. So, uh, yes, but the Federal Reserve, behind the scenes, has the power to create money out of thin air. I mean, it's absolutely bizarre. Never in, in the history of the world has any one single bank been given the power to create the reserve currency of the world world like we've had since 1971. Mm -hmm. So yes, they can bail out their friends and let the people they don't like fail and, it's, it, and create a trillion dollars or more out of thin air mm -hmm. in order to prop up some companies at the expense of others. It's, it's not viable. It makes no sense. When the history of this time is written, people will say, how in the world did they believe that a, a, a few people in a secret room can decide what interest rates should be, how much the money should supply should be, who should fail, what bad assets, what <laughs> worthless assets the taxpayers had to buy. It's absolutely bizarre, and yet the American people uh, right now, I think, are waking up to it. The Federal Reserve is a big issue, and those individuals in the Senate who voted against auditing the Fed, that there will be a political price to pay for that just as much as those who voted for the bailout, because now <coughs> the people know that TARP funds was a political bailout, right. and they've been punished for this like Bennett was punished, but right now, those who vote to enhance the Fed will get punished politically because the people are waking up and uh, they realize the Fed is the culprit. You scored a huge victory in this fight against the Fed earlier when the House passed the, the House passed legislation that included your bill that would actually extend right. the uh, the audits of the Fed to go ahead to monetary policy as well. But it's expected that when and if the Senate passes its version, when it goes to uh, to committee between the two houses, that your amendment's very likely to get stripped out. What do you think about that? No, that, that's possible. I'm surprised we've done this well. My main goal was call attention to the American people of the importance of the Federal Reserve and, and in economic terms, and we've achieved a whole lot. Win or lose, the people are not going to forget about the Federal Reserve. So in some ways, it'll prove my point. Let's say they uh, strip my amendment out and they put in a watered-down version and you don't really have an audit of the Fed. It will just prove the American people that this show is run by the Federal Reserve. They have unbelievable power. We've had this crisis. They're to blame for so much of it, and we're going to give them more power. Not only are we not going to have them audit it in a true sense of where they're going to end up with more power, more regulations, more control over the consumers, and uh, it won't go well with the uh, with the American people. They'll they'll realize then how powerful the institution is, and those who benefit by the creation of money and credit. There are tremendous. I mean, you can't have a military industrial complex. You can't run these wars without the Fed. You can't have a welfare state without the Fed. So if you truly believe in limited government, you have to say you have to sound money. Yeah, this was, whole experiment of the last 35 years or so mm -hmm. is a failure, and that's what we're uh, involved in right now. I, 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 wonder though, I wonder how confident you are in that. I mean, I know it's what you'd like to see happen, this renewed uh, uh, vigilance among the American people and, and demanding uh, fiscal discipline from their leaders, but some of the pollsters who have advised the, uh, the, di the different teams on the, on the U.K. elections say that the voters want more uh, financial regulation, not less, but more government involvement uh, and not more markets. I wonder I, if you think that's true. 
Yeah, you know, I think, I think there's, that's a pretty good point. I think you could even point out to Greece. You know, you'd think by now the Greek people would realize what the problem is. We might realize it, and I certainly think I understand it, but 60% of the people are on the dole over there, so they're yelling and screaming and rioting, not because of the views I hold, but because they want more stuff. They don't want one penny cut. But you know why I don't worry about that? Is because the markets are more powerful than governments. The markets are even more powerful than the Fed. We fixed the price of gold at $35 an ounce for years. Years, but we knew the market couldn't sustain it. You just can't print money and think that the ratio of dollars to gold would remain the same. So that's why we knew the Bretton Woods Agreement would break down. This is why we knew in the year 2000 that the gold price or the dollar would crash in measurement toward gold. So, uh, but the market will answer that question, not uh, not the political but, but people in Washington. Congressman, you've been worried about it since 1971, though. And if you were betting against the markets, you, you would have lost a lot of money with that view. Well, how would you say that? Because since 1971, systematically, you know, I was so foolish as to buy gold coins at $35 an ounce, <laughs> and, and, that was, and, that was, and that was my reserve. See, I'm on a reserve gold standard, <laughs> and I don't feel that badly about that, you know, because uh, my reserves now are, uh, you know, in pretty good shape because of that belief and conviction that I knew in 1971 that paper would lose its value. Now, the gold surge recently is people are discovering, oh, they're really printing money. Well, they've been really printing money for way too long. It's just that they're accelerating it, accelerating it, and you can expect a lot more price inflation. Matter of fact, we have a lot of price inflation already. If you if you look at the cost of medical care and education, the cost of government, the cost of food, uh, many of these things are still going up, but the government says, oh, it's only 2%. There's no inflation, so we have license to print. No way, no way. They're just kidding themselves and they're kidding the American people that the Fed can keep doing what they're doing because the, the economic laws will bring this to an end and, and probably in not too distant future. All right, Congressman Paul, thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate it.